Hey, it's Kenny with HelicopterDrone.com. I'm the creator of Helicopter Online Ground School. And we're going to show you a presentation here on unrotative descent that's going in our new private pilot section. So we'll get to that in just a minute. We just want to let you know that our ground school is being updated. We're putting lots of new videos inside the Helicopter Line Ground School. So this is an example of a lot of stuff we're doing to spice things up and make our ground school that's really, really, really good even better. So let's get to the unrotative descent. We're going out today. We're going to do a classroom presentation for you, but we're going to do it from the helicopter. We've got the presentation that we're going to share with you up here on the screen, and this is uh, compliments of our operations manager, Brian Rutledge, who you probably know, or maybe not know if you're new to Helicopter Line Ground School. Brian Rutledge is our operations manager. He built a presentation for us on auto-rotative descents to add to the aerodynamics section. We're going to go out, talk about the presentation, and then show you a few things with the aircraft. Loma traffic helicopter, 8626, pop up, be on right downwind for 28, now extend till the airplane lands. Plum All right, auto rotative descents, auto rotation. Descending a non-powered flight with a little RPMs come from the upward flow of air. Right now, we're flying around long, getting ready to get set up for an auto. But at the beginning of an entry to an auto rotation, we're always going to do the same three things, down collective, right pedal, and a little bit of aft cyclic at the entry. That airflow is going to change when we go from forward flight to descending. That airflow is going to change and start going up through the rotor system, driving the rotor system. We've taken away the engine power. We start to descend. The upward airflow keeps the blade spin, actually makes them speed up. So depending on what you're flying, you might be entering at 60 knots, 70 knots. Depends on the aircraft. What are you going to use today, Gary? Well, we're, we're, we're going to shoot for uh, the Kenny Keller method of uh, 500 AGL, and we're going to shoot for about 70 on the airspeed. All right, so gear is going to enter around 70. Plummet traffic arrow 32622 is left base, runway 28, full stop, Plummet. He'll enter the auto, and we'll uh, take the camera down to the RPM and show you how that usually we'll build just a little bit during the glide in a straight-in auto. In a 180 auto, during the turn, that, that uh, RPM will always build, and we'll show you that too before we're done. So somewhere around treetop level, 40 feet, 50 feet, again, depending on what your aircraft manufacturer says, you're going to start a flare. That flare is to slow the aircraft down to get ready to level it out and raise the collective either to go to a full touchdown landing or to a hover. So as Gary's getting set up for this auto rotation we're going to show you, we want to explain direction of airflow. During powered flight, the air is drawn from above and accelerated down through the rotor system. The engine is generating the rotor RPMs. During auto rotative flight, the rotor system disengages from the drive system via the freewheeling unit and the unpowered ship begins to descend. The airflow changes direction and begins to move upwards through the rotor system, causing them to spin. Rotor RPM is now supplied by the upward flow of air. Okay, so we had to give way for an airplane, so we're gonna cover another slide here as Gary is getting set up for the auto rotation. So you're gonna have some type of a freewheeling free -wheeling unit, no matter what aircraft you're flying. Different models have a different, maybe different names or a different setup, but basically I think of it like a clutch in a car, right? If you're driving a manual shift, you push the clutch in, the engine and transmission are no longer married. So in a helicopter, same thing. When we enter a rotation, it's like pushing on the clutch. The, trans, the main rotor transmission is then no longer driving the rotor system. The rotor system is going to keep spinning from that upward flow of air. Flow traffic, helicopter 8626, Papa will be on final for 28. Flow the freewheeling unit, located in the upper sheave, when the engine fails or when the throttle is closed in flight, the freewheeling unit disengages the rotor from the engine. It happens as soon as the RPM gets lower than the rotor RPM. Think of it like the rear hub of a bicycle. You can stop pedaling, but the bicycle keeps moving. All right, so we're getting ready to do an auto rotation here, and then we'll come back and talk about the three regions of the rotor disc. So we're flying along, Gary's getting ready. We have 500 HEL. He has about 75 on his airspeed, which is good. We can enter a little bit uh, higher than the, than the glide speed that we want. So he's getting prepared, and when he enters, he is going to, he's going to lower the collective, hold off a little bit of throttle. He's going to pull just a little bit of aft cyclic, and he's going to add some right pedal. We do this every time. All right, we're going to let Gary enter the auto rotation when he's ready. And our focal point's going to be airspeed and RPM. One, two, three, all the way down, right pedal. Okay, now that RPM is going to build because we're no longer flying with the engine, we're flying with the upward flare air will come up through the rotor system. So he's actually
actually raise and collect a little bit because the rotor system wants to speed up. So he's flaring now. He's going to level it out. Now he's bringing the back engine back in. And we're back into a hover. So there's kind of the elements of the auto-rotative descent. And that's where we change from powered flight to non-powered flight and that upward flow of air now going up to the rotor system. Well, with traffic helicopter 866, Papa on to go 28. Try left traffic. All right, so that was an excerpt from our helicopter landing ground school, the private pilot section. If you're enjoying our content, please go below and subscribe to our channel. Click that bell right beside the subscribe button so you'll be notified when we put out new videos. Please click the like button. And if you don't like the video, click the like button twice. So go to the comments below and also let us know what your questions are. What are the things that you're wondering about auto-rotative descents? Put those questions in below and we'll answer those in upcoming videos. So again, like, subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. One.